Yeah, I've never owned it. So this here is the World Tram Museum, and it's absolutely fantastic. They usually run tram rides, but they can't today because the track's damaged. Let's have a look around. This is the World Transport Museum, located in Birkenhead, which is just across the Mersey from Liverpool. Inside the museum, they have this charming little double gauge railway, which I'm, so, I'm sure depicts Birkenhead. See here, we've got some nice little double scale steam locomotives going around, and they're all on timers, so they can get, move and go when their time is up. And also, they've got interactive things on the railway, so there's little buttons which children can press to make a chimney smoke, to make a helicopter work, and to make a windmill turn. And here we see the little blue embarrassment, which really should be scrapped and destroyed. And here we are, that's better. A nice, I think it's a Stania. You can tell by the tender, that's very nice. And just over there, there's another little loco, which is about to set off. There it goes. I think there might be a gin tea, but whatever it is, very nice. Just pulling into sidings there, ready to deliver some freight. The museum contains all different transport vehicles, with the majority being trams, and with the rest being buses, cars, and a few service vehicles. This here is one of the buses you can go into, and you can go right through it, however you can't have to sit in the driver's seat, but it's very nice, you can go sit in there, have a little relax, and it's quite nice in there to see what buses used to be like. It's like driving on So here we are at the top of the bus and you get quite a good view of the museum from the top of the buses. You can see if you look out the window there's the fire engine which my cousin Harry rather likes he tells me. And we've got a lovely little, I'm not sure what that blue blue truck was, we've got some more buses in from there which obviously work, which, and they all worked for the Liverpool and the Wirral area. <laughs> Museum also contains a large collection of memorabilia from the railways and the tramways. So you've got ticket punches, different signs, different models. I like I said, there are also cars. So if you have a look around here, we've got a Morris Minor 1000. And another car, which I'm not sure what it is. It's an Austin. No, no sorry, that's a Fiat, I think, um, from France. And we think it looks a bit like Brum, which is quite nice. Then this is the fire engine, which I'm sure you can tell by the hoses and the ladders. And these here are some more double-decker buses. We've got the... And there are some modern buses over there, and I think it's called Ollie, that one, which you can just see now. I'm not entirely sure. can't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure it's Ollie. And then the volunteers saw that I was filming and was v and very kindly let said I could go into a tram. So here's the volunteer opening the tram so I can have a little look inside. But unfortunately, we couldn't get the chain unlocked, so I had to do a bit of a manoeuvre under the chain to get in. But it was really worth it. Have a look at this, guys. Yeah. So this tram used to work in Liverpool around the Merseyside area, I believe, around the James Street area. I must admit, James Street is a nice street. It's got a nice pumping station on there, George's Dock we visited before. And over here you can see the driving platform where the, tra where the driver would drive the tram, hence the name. Very simple controls, forwards, backwards, and your braking your throttle is all in one. And it's actually a handbrake. And then we got to go upstairs. Now, if any of you have been on a tram in, say, Beamish or the Black Country Museum, you know that the stairs are steep and thin. So, holding the camera, it wasn't too easy, but I did manage it. Obviously, we've got a volunteer just up ahead to take me up there. And see, I'm slowly waking my, making my way up, trying not to drop the camera and trying not to fall over. It's a bit of a balancing act, but I managed it. I haven't fallen over on a tram just yet. And here we are, another little view down there. Now, this one is another tram which he lets on, which all the electrics work, and the inside is absolutely fantastic. It's just in incredible condition. You've got to see this, guys. Have a look at this. So this is uh, 762. Yeah. Yeah. So this here is tram number 726. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I think this one worked in, Ber in the Bergen Head area. Although, I'd say it might have been Mer's side. They got different vehicles from all over the place, all over the Mer's side. In the, from, from the area which worked in transport. Looks like the interior is the old LNRT coach you can get. Yes. Passengers by kindly having their fares ready in tender. Yeah. Yeah. In copper. Yeah. And once again, here's the driving platform with forward, backwards, brake, and accelerator, and your handbrake. I did forget to mention that on the previous tram. Here, nice little, nice little panel, the English Electric Company, London. Obviously, it's not a London tram. 
but it's made in London. And you hear a nice little view down the place where the public can't go. You see a little view down the trams there with the tram getting repaired. Because they do actually operate trams on the original tram network. They have a, a bit of track which goes from the museum to the Woodside Ferry Terminal past Shore Road Pumping Station, which you can have a ride on. But unfortunately it wasn't running today because the track was damaged. And what I love about trams is no matter is you can change the seats like that, well just like you've just seen, to see which direct where you could sit in direction. And then they let me ding the bell, which is fantastic. Have a go? Yeah yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's the um, that's the call Hold tight. That's brilliant. <laughs> Loud. Yeah, and then you just press that and do all the looks like they've done the truck underneath, like the chassis sort of thing. We've got and it was a Liverpool tram, and it was, I think it's the only preserved Liverpool tram that's capped before, because this was one of the older ones, the newer ones, like those, a streamlined, whereas this is a bit older, a bit more old fashioned. Oh yeah, and you should be restoring them. No, it's a person's blackout. Yeah, oh yeah. When we went when we've done our test we have to do it on the back end. Yeah. Well, these seats quite good because they can be used both for yeah. the forwards and the going Yes, um, we quite often use this when the trams are Ring that bell pretty much completes my life. Fantastic. And here we are, we're gonna go up there. Now, Obviously, Harry's not interested in trams too much. He's off going off. He's not. He doesn't want to go upstairs, unfortunately. But I do, so I'm off. These stairs were especially twisty, especially thin, and especially hard to climb. But I managed it. And But it was so worth it. Look at this, guys. The teak, the wood, the lights. It's just absolutely stunning. Also, like I said, this is tram number six, 762. Um, could have worked in Birkenhead or Liverpool. I'm not entirely sure. But... The way they've preserved it is just fantastic. I think this actually works as well. Um, they can drive this around. They use the for winter and autumn months, and I think spring as well. They use the trams with roofs on. However, in the summer months, they use open top trams, which you'll be able to see in just a minute. Here's one of the open top trams used in the summer months, and of course, my cousin Harry, which you've seen on many videos. There's Harry. <laughs> so yeah. Gonna head back down now. You see the old door. Let's see. Guess it's tight. You alright mate? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. How'd you feel about it then this morning? It's brilliant. Now that was absolutely fantastic. Now heading along here we have another Birkenhead tram. Now this is actually a very old one, a Victorian one, and it is horse drawn. Because before we invented engines and before we invented electric motors, everything was horse drawn or man powered. This is a horse drawn one. This is another typical, typical tram, nothing too much special about this. This is a, an open top tram again. Nice tram. Um, I'm not sure if this one works. I think it might work, but I'm not entirely sure. If it does work, I don't, I've don't. personally never seen it running. Now if you look around here, this is the blue tram, that's what I call it at least, and this is the tram that is often used. This is from Paint and Isle Birkenhead Market, as it says in front. Um, this is the one I see running most times in there, and there is a video of this running on my channel, so make sure you go check that out, guys. This is a railway truck, see Lion's Men at work, and this here is a little toy tram, which children love to have a ride on. Um, oh, you know he wants to. <laughs> oh, but many a happy time on this. Oh. So these here are some old Hornby Double O and Triang locomotives. So we've got these are the original Double O, and then over here we've got here's the A4. This is A4 Golden Fleece. There you go. Then we've got Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Then we've got a Jing Tea. Four plus four. Then we've got Duchess of Montrose. And some old workshop and then we've got the model railway in there. It's absolutely fantastic guys. If you're ever in Birkenhead area come to the World Transport Museum. And now we're off to Wood 
Now on this tram, if you put 20p in it, you can have a little short ride on it, it'll move back and forwards. One pound for a decent ride. And of course, my cousin Harry and Robin one set of the goats. So here's Robin climbing on into the driver's seat and getting ready to drive the tram. And Harry's getting ready to ding the bell. And hopefully they'll enjoy their time with the tram. Let's watch them enjoy the little tram. Yeah, ding the bell, Harry. That's a bit of practice. Other way. Chris, do the way. Ding ding! Say it. Hey, hey, get over there! Okay, you can run me over. Turn the lights on. That's just crazy. I'm filming this, you know. I'm filming you. Oh, hi. Yep. Hey. Hey. Are we getting up after this ride? And now we're heading to Woodside to the ferry terminal cafe to have some tweet. And on the way there we pass the Cheshire Line building. These are these contain the Office of Great Northern, Great Central, and the Midland Railway. Obviously not anymore, but they did originally got the writing on there. And next is the building that I enjoy most. Round this corner is Shaw Road Pumping Station. Built in 1886, contains the biggest graspable beam engine in the world. Now, if you remember rightly, I did do a video on this when I toured around it, and the video is up in the right now. Well, obviously it's not linked there, but you'll be able to see it. And it is an amazing pumping station, go see it. The video's not that good, but one day I hope we go back there and remake it. Heading down here towards the ferry terminal. The ferries weren't running today um, because of issues with the ferry. I have done a video on them before. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.